Welcome to this session on the building floors and grid. So in this session, we'll review the floor and grid system that's already been set up for this project. So Open Buildings Designer uses floors as a means of organizing, designing, and reporting building information. And basically, floors define the physical location for portions of the building relative to a reference elevation. And essentially what it's doing is creating an auxiliary coordinate system that represent the floor of the building so that you can place your walls, your doors, and so forth on a particular floor or plane of the building. And the nice thing is that by creating floors in this floor management system, those floors become available to every file within your work set. So we're going to come down to the bottom of the interface and there is an icon here that will open the actual floor manager. So I'm going to open that up. So this is the floor manager. This is where you actually set up and manage the floors. So you can see here, we've got a building, Let's slide this over a little bit, and we, we've set up basically five floors. There's a basement floor. And so the first floor defines actually the starting elevation. So in this case, we're saying minus 15. We're going to set our ground floor at zero. So basement is minus 15. And then as we go up, we're just defining a floor to floor height. So if the floor to floor height of that floor is 15 feet, then the ground floor is at zero. That has a floor to floor height of 15 feet. And then that puts the next floor at 15 feet and so on. So what we have here is this ground floor, which will be the lobby floor of our office building, and then two floors above that that are 14 feet floor to floor. And then we're defining the roof plane. In addition, I'm going to expand this. You can have reference planes within a floor. So for instance, if we want to define the top of steel, and in that case, this elevation becomes essentially relative to the floor elevation. So minus four inches is the top of steel or the eave level of the roof, which in this case is going to be three feet above the actual roof level. And there, there's tools across the top there for setting up and managing those floors. We have another session on that, so I'm not going to go into all of that, but just want to point you in the right direction. So I'm going to go ahead and close that dialog. And the tool we're going to use as we are modeling our building here is this pull down here, which is the actual floor selector. So from any file, I can select the floor that I want to work on. So in this case, we are going to model the floor lobbies. So I'm going to select the ground floor as my floor. Now it's hard to see that anything's changed here, but actually this is defining that ACS. If we switch this and select floor one, and you can watch that ACS in these other views as well, we'll see that ACS pop up to the different floor elevation. And so anything we modeled would be at that elevation. So I'm going to go back to my ground floor and set that for this file. Once I've done that, I may want to come up at the top. There's a few quick tools up here and we're going to save settings. And that just means the next time we open this file, it will be set with this floor, certain settings that get saved when you do a save settings. You can also use control F on the keyboard to do a save settings. And I'll just mention why we're talking about the floor selector that there's some icon locks at the top of your interface here. The two middle ones here are the ACS plane lock and the ACS plane snap lock. Every time you select a floor, those are going to be locked on. And that's what ensures that if I were to place a wall right now, for instance, it would be locked on that plane. And if I were to unlock those, it would allow me then to move off that plane and place something at a different elevation. So generally I want to keep those locked, but occasionally you may need to unlock them and place something, you know, off the floor level. Then the second thing we need really is a grid system, right? Just something that gives us some reference lines as to where our columns are going to go. And then in relation to that, where the, the walls will go. 
And so over here is an icon that opens the grid systems manager. And similar to the floor manager, I could add a grid here. I could define its, its spacing in the X and the Y direction. Um, there's even tools to sketch a grid. We can rotate it and so forth. Again, not going to go into that in this class. You can take the structural quick start where you would learn how to set up the grid for this building. In this case, we're simply going to import a grid that's already been set up. So you can see over here, there's an import tool. I'm gonna pull, pull that down and say, import the grid from an XML file. And if you, it doesn't take you to the right directory to that work set that you're working in, you can always come down here on these file open tools and you'll get a list of the last directory you were in. So we can see right here is our quick start architecture designs folder. I'm just going to select that. And that's where that Office Grid XML is. So I'll select that and we'll select open and it would list any grids that were in that particular XML. We just have the one, we're going to select it and select it for import and import that. And you can see now that's created a grid for us. Note that a grid can be assigned to a particular building. So we just have the one building in our floor manager, and then we can assign that grid to particular floors. So if your grid needs to change as it goes up, you might create a couple of grids and then assign them to different floors. In this case, we can just go right from the basement floor all the way to the top of the roof or the eave level of the roof. And then I'm going to select OK. And now you'll note that our grid shows up in our model. And again, that would show up in every DGN model that we create within this work set. I'm gonna go ahead and do a fit view and fit view. And if I change my floor elevation again, let's go back to note that that grid moves up. It always aligns with the floor. We'll go back to the ground floor. I'm gonna do control F one more time just to make sure my settings are saved. And now I'm really ready to start modeling. So in the next session, we'll start placing the walls for the building. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.